Welcome to Old Faithful. I'm your host, Matt Trask. My thanks as always to Haggerty's Music Works here on the hill in Rap City. My thanks to the incomparable Johnny Hastings, as always, making me and my guests look good on camera. Please support my friends at Black Hills Blend Espresso. And please like, share, and subscribe to Matthew Trask's YouTube channel. While you're at it, also please like, share, and subscribe to the Haggerty's Music Works YouTube channel. Yay, they're <laughs> doing amazing things. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited about this episode. I'm excited every week, but we have electric guitars, pedals, and amps like Jesus intended. And a guy I don't know well, but I've been bugging for quite a while. Mr. <laughs> yeah. Josh Shepard, how are you? I, I'm doing great. Good to be here. Man. Well, good. We're going to talk a whole bunch more about all these toys we brought. Yeah. But first, go ahead and tell us about you. Um, well, first of all, Johnny may be making you comfortable, but he's kind of makes me nervous. Like, yeah, I'm going to play guitar. <laughs> yes, guitar is down. That sounds great. <laughs> Give it yeah. up there. Yes. Um, so, but yeah, no, my name's Josh. I'm originally from Arkansas. I okay. grew up there, born and raised there. I moved up here about seven years ago. Um, I've played guitar most all my life. I uh, started my dad played guitar and mm -hmm. called his whole side of the family. Um, I got more serious about it probably when I was about 15. Started okay. playing more and got my first electric guitar. And um, I've been playing ever since. Well, cool. What were you doing in Arkansas? Oh, well, um, so my background as far as professionally work is um, like nursing. Oh, so okay. I'm a nurse. All right. And now I do, um, still have a nursing license, but I do like clinical research. So I help run drug studies. for. Doctors. I see. And how did you end up here? We're glad to have you, by the oh, way. Oh, it's kind of a long story, but um, basically 2013, after the health care law change, right. I had to change some things with my job. I was doing like contract nursing and anyway, it changed some of that. And so I was going to have to find something else. I see. And um, I ended up packing up my family. We bought like a big like camper, 35 foot camper, and drove around the country for about six months. Wow! And just checking out different places and stuff. And we had some friends that had just moved up here, and we came to visit them, and it seemed like the right thing to do, so we decided to settle down here. So, did you continue on the road trip looking at other spots, or did you know when you got here? <laughs> I kind of knew when I got here, like it was surprising. Um, like, we came and we met some people, and it's like, I just like the feel of the right. place and the size of the town. You know, it has, like, kind of a small town, big town kind of feel. Sure. Um, just because there's nothing else around here for so far. Um, but I like the, you know, the landscape and the scenery and just, I don't know, there's a certain feel to this place cool. that I really like. Do you still have the camper? No, no, I had to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was living in it for a while, but I was oh, like, yeah. all right. I need a, a place to live now. So. so back down there in Arkansas, your dad played guitar. I believe yep. we're going to talk more about that sure. later. But was he in a band? Was there um, a band when in he the was band? like when he was younger, like in high school okay. and early adulthood, he played in bands. And okay. like him and his brother um, played music off and on. And most of it, though, most of my childhood memories growing up were. Like with my dad and his brother and my grandma, like after church on Sundays, okay. you know, sitting around with a couple of guitars and a piano, right. playing old gospel music and stuff. Did you, um, so after church, you probably went to church, which is none of my business, uh -huh. but did you sing at church any more than the congregation? Were you um, some, yeah, I would, or anything? Yeah, they would try to get me up there and sing okay. and play a little bit, sure. um, which I was into. It was okay. Right. I, I didn't do it a whole lot. But. Was that your first kind of performance? Yeah, I guess that would have been probably my first performance as a teenager, sure. a young kid, like playing in right. church. Um, and then once I started playing electric guitar and started playing the the nasty rock and roll. Right. The devil's my, music. Yeah, the devil's right. music. Uh, my family wasn't too happy about it. Um, right. But I started playing in bands and stuff okay. in high school. And I had a band called Taught the Rabbits when I was in college that we recorded and toured little small stuff. Um, but it still holds up. You can find some of the music on Bandcamp. And um, my friend that I was with that in, his name's Adam Fawcett, that's stir still a touring professional musician. Okay. He's won a few like singer-songwriter awards and putting out albums. He's really really good musician. Adam Fawcett. Adam Fawcett. Yeah, okay. give him a chance. He's Spelled on Spotify. Spelled like a faucet of a sink or F-A-U-C-E-T-T. Well, I mean, And we got to go back to this band name, Todd the, the Rabbit. Yeah. Was this 
a very am I going to hear something very profound or had we had too much Everclear? No, no, no. It was how we came up with it. We were just talking about like imagery and stuff, what we wanted sure. to be associated with the band. And this was this is you know an indie rock kind of noisy rock sure. band. Um, and we we're like, yeah, it'd just be cool. Like if there was like this old man that lived out in the woods and he sat on slanted chairs and had tall pianos and you know he taught the rabbits how to do stuff. Taught the rabbits. That's it. That's kind of how it came. <laughs> I don't, there was kind of a theme though. Like so, this was like early two thousands. Right. So we were taught the rabbits, and shortly after that, you had bands like well, there was well, Modest Mouse was all already around. Okay. But then, like Grizzly Bear and uh, Fleet Foxes. So I don't know. That kind of became a theme. Forest creatures were a right. Theme yeah, for a I while. guess so. Sure. That, that yeah. meant rock and roll. Forest creatures. Absolutely. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> so. Tell us about your first guitar. Okay, my first guitar, um, well, I, I learned how to play. My dad had an old, like, acoustic uh, Alvarez acoustic. Sure. It was yeah. a big jumbo body, really loud guitar, mm -hmm. but terrible to play. You know, the action was this high. And, right. Um, so then I got my first guitar when I was about 15 was um, a PV Patriot. Okay, um, yeah. And I liked that it. it sounded decent, but it did not hold tune very okay. well. And so for a long time, I played, my friend had a Squire, um, oh, it was like a, a Jazzmaster style Squire. Okay. And yeah. I played that most mm -hmm. of the time, like in my band and stuff. What kind of amp were we playing at the time? So at the time, I had uh, an old, it was like a 70 or 71 uh, Fender Super Reverb, like the 410s. It sounded wow. great. Um, it was a great, great No amp. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Taught the Rabbits. And Taught the Rabbits, yeah. 71 the Silver Face yep. Fender Super Reverb. Right, right. Wow. It sounded good, and my buddy, he played like a big Marshall half stack, like a JCM 2000 so or something like that. So we had some really good tone yeah. in Yeah, we had a lot better uh, amps than we did uh, talent. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> uh, shortly after, in fact, the week after I started playing guitar left-handed. Mm -hmm. So I was essentially a brand new guitarist. Again. Right. I bought a 1972 uh, Fender Twin Reverb from a guy in California. Mm -hmm. It cost me $800, which I did not have. But anyway, back to you. So, uh, tell us maybe about this guitar right here. And what <clears throat> bands are you in now? Okay, well, um, kind of how it starts. So, after like playing in bands and everything through college, um, then I kind of stopped. I had a whole, um, I had to felt like I had to grow up, you right. know? <laughs> Um, and so I got rid of most of my music equipment and really stopped playing guitar at all, except for my acoustic guitar on the couch right. for what ended up being about 16 years. Wow, that's and quite then, a spell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so then about two years ago, um, like I said, you know, I'd, I'd moved up here and like things were still changing, mm -hmm. kind of chaotic. And I was just like, I just want to play music mm -hmm. again. And so I came here to Haggerty's and I was looking at guitars and I was looking actually at um, like jazz masters. I really right. like those offset guitars. Um, and I was playing those. Seems and, like a guy and taught the rabbits to yeah. have a jazz master. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, we looked up to, you know, uh, Sonic Youth right, and yeah. Built to Spill and all those kind of, <laughs> yeah, Nirvana. Um, and. So I start. I was playing that, and I'm like, well, if I if I get back into playing any gigs or anything, it's probably going to just be me solo. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying out some different guitars. I picked up this guitar, and it just sounded so big, right. <laughs> you know. And I'm like, oh, this is what I want. And so um, that's kind of how I got into. I was actually remember when I was younger, I was steered away from big like electric hollow body guitars. Right. Like you don't want to play real rocky stuff with that because you get. Yep. Yeah, then there is like feedback issues right. and everything. I'm like. I like feedback. I play feedback on right. on purpose. So I don't know. So I started playing this um, and playing a little bit around town, and that's when I I met uh, you know Dexter Carmen, which I yes. think you've interviewed on this show, yeah. um, and a lot of the people through the Cave Collective. Um, and we Dexter and I ended up forming a band um, called Modern Folklore that um, together basically last summer. Cool. And I have not seen you guys perform live. I've seen clips. Oh, You're yeah. Very good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, the issue with feedback can be an issue. Number mm -hmm. one, get a longer chord. Number two, don't point the guitar at the amplifier, mm -hmm. and you'll be better. But I think in general, since the 70s, a lot of the hardware pickups and stuff right. have gotten 
to where they combat feedback. Right, yeah, the shielding degree. and everything. He's going to do a demonstration where you see this thing can handle <laughs> more gain than it should be able to. Right. So is this in the Electromatic? Is this what This is, yeah, the Electromatic, kind of like the midline um, Gretsch here. So sure. it's not the, like it the... would be the Made in Korea um, this is the made in Indonesia, okay. I believe. All right. And like the high end, yeah, is made in, the made in Japan, sure. which I would love to have. But right. Those are touch prices. Yeah. So. But we have everything that you want on a Gretsch guitar. Indeed. We have a Bigsby. We have TV, TV Jones, Filtertron pickups, Indeed. maybe just Filtertron. Uh, these are the fil just regular yeah. filters. Okay, not mm -hmm. TV Jones, excuse me. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> we have a pickup selector switch, and of course, we have a master volume. And we have thumbnail inlays, right. which I've never quite gotten on on board with. But hey, oh, really? they're, I like they're a Gretsch classic. Yeah, I kind of like the look of them. Right. And I'm used to my acoustic guitar having Martin, like just okay. a regular Dreadnought sure. Martin. And all it has is just the dots on top. There's nothing right. on the face of the fretboard. And so, I don't know, that pretty, right. that does it for me. <laughs> well, let's continue. We have, there's five or six guys watching saying dude what's that other guitar but yeah you're gonna have to wait <laughs> let's just go ahead and talk about because sure. i haven't had pedals on for a while mm. tell us about your pedal board such as it is um yeah well it's just a pedal hooked together right now um i start with well just this polytune sure. um uh, pedal which is a, a true bypass and it's nice um and then i go into this uh jhs morning glory which is a transparent overdrive that just sounds, uh, it sounds really good. And it has two gain stages. Let me, uh, so there's my clean tone. Yep. Um, here's low gain. Here's a high gain. Awesome. Um, so I go to that. And then from there I go into, this is also a JHS. Oh, I love JHS pedal company. Um, this is the Kilt. And it is a distortion and fuzz pedal. It has two stages of distortion and two stages of fuzz. So it goes from here. When I get a little more crunchy, I kick this on. And, and if it actually wants to get really crunchy. A hollow body guitar should not be able to do that. <laughs> and I believe I've mentioned on the show before, I have purposefully never played a JHS pedal because I don't want to like that. Because <laughs> yeah. we would have one heck of a problem. <laughs> JHS, Joshua Heath Scott in Kansas City, Missouri, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, that's right. One of the kind of the four fathers of the boutique pedal movement mm -hmm. makes a very fine pedal. That is very cool. And in the corner... This is, we haven't done this for quite a while, a personal amplifier on the show. Go ahead and tell us what it is. Yeah, so this is a, um, a Princeton Reverb, but it's a special edition. It's called the Black and Blue Edition. And I think they only made 200 of these. And so a normal Princeton has like a 10-inch ceramic speaker, I believe. Right. And this has a 12-inch Blue Alenico speaker. Ooh. Um, but it's still just a 15-watt tube amp. Right. Um, that... I don't know, to me it just sounds amazing. I played I played a bunch of different Princetons in there. Okay. And um, this was something I, I kind of wanted. It's like it's small enough I can still play it at home. Sure. But I can also do gigs with it. Right. Especially now, most of the time you're just micing it. Right. So yeah. I think it has a great sound. Did this one just kind of was leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of them? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. I think that 12-inch speaker has just a little bit more punch. Sure. And uh, I don't know, I just fell in love with Were it. So you, I didn't have it. <laughs> had you come from mostly 12-inch speakers? Um, no, like I said, most I played before the only um, electric amp that I, well, I had a small, my first amp was actually a little PV practice okay. amp, you know, a little mm -hmm. 10 inch uh, right. uh, solid state amp. Um, and so my first tube amp was that 71 okay. Super Reverb. Which would have four tens. And that tens. had four tens, sure. yeah. Um, and so that's what I was looking, like, I didn't want anything really big. But right. when I got this, I just, but I love the Fender tone and right. the reverb, the spring reverb is, mm -hmm. I don't know, I pretty much always have at least some reverb on my You amps, can't so. argue with a Fender spring reverb. Yeah. You really can't. <clears throat> Um, so there goes my theory that we our ears get used to one speaker size, because that clearly isn't the case here. No, yeah. Oh, and I pretty much go by, well, just how it sounds. Like, sounds right. and playability. Right. Like, yep. the name doesn't matter too much. Like, I didn't especially want to pay extra for a limited edition, but 
when you can do A-B testing, you can plug it into a regular Princeton. And plug if it, into this it one, sounds like, better, yes, then you have to be, <laughs> Yes, I ran into the same problem, actually. Yes. So for those who are maybe not as gearheadish as the rest of us, uh, these, this is a Fender tube amplifier. And throughout the history of Fender, they, you can think of them as coming in various sizes of the same amplifier, which is wrong, but you can think of it mm -hmm. that way. And among other things, the smaller ones are lighter, take up less space, but they break up. They make that devil rar rar sound at mm -hmm. a lower volume than right. the bigger one. So there are many benefits to the smaller amp. This at 15 watts would be one of the smallest tube amplifiers. I believe there's two or three mm -hmm. underneath of it. But the one above it would be my personal favorite and a personal favorite of the incomparable Johnny Hastings at 22 watts, the Deluxe. The Deluxe, as yeah, we which all is know. a really good sound. And then it would have been so. the Viper Deluxe and then the Super Reverb. The Super Reverb, yeah. But that's and enough nerdy. Twin now. Reverbs. <laughs> and then the Twin Reverbs, yes. yes it's 212. For sure. <laughs> we have to get to this. Yes, indeed. Over here. Here, let me put this down. So, this guitar has an interesting story um this was my dad's guitar and he well originally it was his uncle's which i believe that he he must have got it directly from the factory okay um and my dad when he was in high school he fell in love with this guitar and so he paid my uncle a hundred bucks for it back in like the 70s no <laughs> yep and he said a hundred bucks well it was just so because his my uncle's kids also play guitar right and my uncle's like, well, I'll give it to you. And my dad's let me pay you for it so there's no argument. Right. So my dad paid him $100, right. and he said, when you pass on, you give it to me. Right. And so that was in, like, the mid-'70s. So, like, the late '90s, my great-uncle passed away and gave it to my dad. Right. Um, and then my dad had it until last year my dad passed away. And uh, First of all, my condolences. That's all right. Um, thank you. Um, and so now it has come into my possession. Wow! And it is a... Well, we did some work. I've actually brought it into Haggerty's, and um, Chris here, he took a look at it, and I had it checked out, like, if, are the parts working, and um, I said all original parts, and the mm -hmm. best they could tell it is. And I was like, figure out exactly what it is. And so there's actually two stamps on here, one from 1967 okay. and one from 68. Okay. And... Uh, what he thinks probably happened was it, it came off the line in 67 as a standard like starburst mm -hmm. um and they it probably had like a defect in it and so it was custom at the time like they would send it back through and either and just, you know refinish it um and he said so this probably went through got this custom paint job as a mm -hmm. refinish over the old sunburst so it's this sparkle candy apple red um which is dark and kind of some over the ages but it's really <coughs> in pretty good shape and um, it still sounds pretty good, too. That is incredible. We are looking at a Gibson ES-175. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, most famously used by Scotty Moore, mm -hmm. backing Elvis Presley. Right. A rockabilly deluxe guitar. And we were. he sent me a picture of it the other day. He told me about it a while ago. Mm -hmm. And I could not believe what I was seeing because nobody else can either. <laughs> this is supposed to be sunburst. It should not be this wine red color. Right. It is gorgeous. I'm so happy to have it on the show. Has anything been done to it? it no, no, nothing. From I can tell, it's uh, all original. Like this, um, the binding you can tell is sh shrunk down. Right. It has the normal checking, which any of these guitars would on this time. But the not only, much. Really. But no, yeah, no, and it's in no pretty good shape. No buckle rash. Right. Um, the only part, this input jack has got seen a little bit of damage, oh, but it's okay. not. But it is not too bad. No. Um. The neck still feels really good, um, and these original tuners, everything. Wow, and these are order. sometimes these will disintegrate, but they haven't in this yeah. case. Wow, that is very cool. We could speculate about what kind of pickups are in it. I yeah, I suppose I we'd both know, be wrong <laughs> in showing off. They might be T-tops. They might actually be the after the PAS when they right. got the patent. Then it was just. Patent number stickers. Sure. It could be patent number stickers. That's enough <laughs> showing off, really. We gotta hear something on Okay, this. yeah. Can I'd we like do look. that? Yes. I will unplug this guitar for okay. you. Okay. You went through your strap there. Yeah, let me check that. 
Actually. Ladies and gentlemen, the hundred dollar Gibson ES one seventy five. Let me turn. I like a little bit of reverb and vibrato on there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'll play. Uh, this is the kind of music that my dad liked. He liked a lot of finger pick, like Jerry Reed, Chet Atkins, that kind of stuff. And so I'll do my best to do it. I'm not the absolutely. <laughs> right on this guitar doesn't it yes it really does a delay pedal wouldn't kill us but that's yeah. a small quibble <laughs> yes so where can i imagine due to the recent pandemic that we've all been going through mm -hmm. modern folklore hasn't been performing much. yeah no we played just a, a few shows um last summer like outdoors right. Um, and we've been practicing as safe as we, as we can right. like through most of the winter and we're actually going to record um, at Flatiron Studios so starting next week and so oh, we hope to get that out perfect. pretty soon. Just we're going to start with the EP um, but we have some stuff in the works that sure. we'll be doing soon. Where can we find modern folklore on the internet? Um, the pl best place right now is just is our Facebook and Instagram page okay. at Modern right. Folklore. And uh, we have a website that hopefully we'll have together to be putting out. Okay. From it, which it'll just be modernfolklore.com. Sure. Um, when we record and put out something. So. Awesome. And uh, Taught the Rabbits can be found in various clips on YouTube. <laughs> Is that right? Um, well, prop maybe. So there was some. There might be some. This, this was pre-YouTube. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> wow, a long um, time ago. But yeah, you can find some on Bandcamp. Okay. And... Um, my friend Adam Fawcett has some of the stuff. Okay, stuff. sounds good. Plug for Adam Fawcett. Yeah. If he ever gets here, I'd love to have him on Oh, the yeah, show. he's a really interesting guy. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything else we need to talk about? Uh, no, I think that covers everything. Pretty much covers that. Thank yeah. you so much for being on the show. Oh, uh, you're welcome. When I get done jabbering, you'll grab the Gretsch again and play an original song. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. Okay, sure. here, I'm going to do some jabbering now. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching the show. Thanks to my guest for being on the show. Remember my sponsorship with Trask Hay LLC, large round and square bales, 5150858. And because we had a Gretsch guitar and because Chet Atkins was mentioned, a man that Chet Atkins did allow was a certified guitar player himself mm -hmm. and who just recently got a Gretsch signature model introduced. Mr. Steve Warner says, change your shape. <laughs> Josh right. Shepard, take it away, bud. <laughs> Uh, this song's called Sidewalks. <laughs>
see you next week.